India's Finance Minister P. Chidambaran will present one of the most highly anticipated Indian budgets of recent years later today to discuss with us about the budget. This morning is Leon Pereira of Spire Research and Consulting. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Leon. It's Yvonne here. Now, Leon, will the government rebuff demands for pre-election spending and insist on austerity to shore up investors' faith in a troubled economy? Good morning, Yvonne. Yes, I think that is very much the case. Uh, we understand, inspired, that P. Chindambaram, the finance minister, has convinced his cabinet colleagues to go for an austerity budget, a budget that actually reduces the fiscal deficit, to strongly demonstrate a fiscal prudence to the investor community. And the reason he's been able to do that is to avert a ratings downgrade, to avert uh, the possibility of a balance of payments crisis. So he seems to have successfully convinced uh, his cabinet colleagues to really move away from the typical reflex of raising uh, spending before an election, because this will be the last budget before uh, India goes to a uh, national election. So he succeeded in doing that. Well, will tackling the bloated fiscal deficit be the centerpiece of his presentation, do you think? Yes, I think austerity will really be the, the centerpiece of this budget, which is not to say that there won't be other things in there. There could be some tinkering at the margins, uh, some measures to stimulate growth. For example, I think they will make it more attractive for foreign portfolio investors to come in and finance infrastructure development through bonds. But the centerpiece is really going to be a deficit reduction. That's the most uh, urgent priority. The uh, fiscal deficit is probably going to be about 5.3% for this financial year ending in March. And the target will be 4.8% for the next financial year uh, beginning in April. So that's a somewhat ambitious deficit reduction target, but not too ambitious, we feel. Well, if India fails to honour its fiscal commitments, will the sovereign rating downgrade to junk status be inevitable, do you think? Uh, I think it will be pretty much inevitable. Investor confidence in uh, Indian fiscal policy is uh, somewhat fragile, and we saw that last year because of some changes to the tax code that were made uh, rather clumsily. There was uh, some uh, capital flight, uh, foreign direct investors actually pulling out funds from India, and that, that caused some problems. So that will be weighing heavily, I think, on P. Chindambaram's mind, and the Indian government will really not want to uh, go back there uh, again. Well, both private investment and consumer demand are weak. Will lower public spending risk deepening India's sharpest economic slowdown in a decade? Well, we don't think that there's going to be a real risk of uh, this deficit reduction tipping India back into uh, a recession or, or into a, exacerbating the economic downturn in any way. If you look at the history of economic growth in India over the past 10 years, it hasn't really been driven by fiscal stimulus, by expansionary government spending, as it has been in some other countries. It's been private sector driven. It's been driven by reforms to open up markets, to get more investment from domestic investors, from foreign direct investment, and so on. So uh, reducing the deficit by a, a, a small amount, we're not talking about a huge, massive uh, deficit reduction, but you know, a calibrated deficit reduction is not going to exacerbate a downturn. The thing we have to bear in mind as well is that there are some signs from uh, recent data from the economic survey presented uh, yesterday uh, in Parliament that uh, economic health is returning uh, to the system. And lastly, uh, reducing the deficit will uh, enable the central bank, the RBI, to cut rates, which uh, Spire expects will happen next week. So there should be some relief coming in from the monetary policy front. And Leon, does the government have great options to boost revenue? Well, there are some options. Uh, I wouldn't say there are too many. They can raise about 400 billion rupees from uh, divesting uh, state-owned companies. They will probably raise some revenues from selling telecommunications spectra. They may increase the excise duties and they may impose some duties on diesel vehicles. So there are some uh, options on the table. I don't think we'll see too much in the way of revenue raising. If you look at the history of P. Chindambaram, ideologically, he tends to prefer reigning in spending rather than increasing taxes uh, to raise revenue. So that will continue to be the case with today's budget, we feel. Well, proposals for higher taxes on the super rich were floated. Will this deal another blow to investors' confidence? I don't think this will really affect investors' confidence in too big a way. We feel inspired that it's likely there will be some uh, tax surcharge on the super rich. This is not going to be a huge increase in tax. You're talking of uh, an order of magnitude of maybe one percentage point uh, increase in tax. And the tax levels are already very high. We don't feel that this kind of a measure is going to reduce investment or provoke a migration uh, of economic elites. The bigger concern for investors, I think, is just going to be opening up uh, markets and reforms to rules and regulations.
Okay, as always, thank you so much, Leon Pereira, for that.